Okay, in this video, we're going to be recapping the trigonometric ratios that are covered at GCSE. For more sections in this lesson, visit parkmaths.com forward slash y1 trig. The trigonometric ratios are related to a right angled triangle. First of all, we'll label the sides in the triangle. The longest side in the triangle is the hypotenuse. The side used along with the hypotenuse to make the angle is called the adjacent. And the side that's not touching the angle labeled is called the opposite. And we have ratios for sine, cosine and tangent as follows. Sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan theta is opposite over adjacent. And one way a lot of people remember these ratios is using Sokotoa. And the way that works is each letter represents something in the formula. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tan is opposite over adjacent. Next, I'd like to look at some specific exact values that occur frequently when dealing with trig ratios. To do that, we're going to look at a couple of right angled triangles. The first one is going to have a base of one and a height of one. As the base is the same as the height, it means the angle has to be 45 degrees. And we could use Pythagoras to calculate the length of the hypotenuse. I'll leave that as an exercise to do later. The second triangle is an equilateral triangle with side length two. As it's equilateral, that means all of the angles are 60 degrees. And to make this into a right angle triangle, we're going to split it in half and then get rid of one of the halves. The base is half of the original triangle, so that will be one. We know that one of the angles is 60. That means the other angle has to be 30. And as part of the exercise we're going to do in a minute, you'll need to calculate the third side in that triangle. So what I'd like you to do is using these identities, find the exact values for sine, cos and tan of 45, 60 and 30 degrees. In order to do that, you will first need to find the missing values on the right angled triangles you can see on the left. So pause the video, have a go at these questions, and then come back and check your solutions against mine. Welcome back, I'll go through my solutions now then. So in the first triangle, we could use Pythagoras, we would do one squared plus one squared, which is two, and then square root that, we find h is root two. For the triangle at the bottom, we're finding a shorter side, so we'll do the hypotenuse squared, two squared is four, minus the adjacent squared, so two squared minus one squared gives us three. Square root it, we get root three. Then we can work out our trigonometric ratios. To get sine 45, we use the top triangle and we do opposite over hypotenuse. So one over root two for sine 45. To get cos 45, we do the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is again one over root two. For tan 45, we do opposite over adjacent, one over one, it's just one. In the second triangle to find sine 60, we need to do opposite over hypotenuse. That gives us root three over two. For cos 60, it's adjacent over hypotenuse. That's a half. Tan 60 is opposite over adjacent. So root three over one is just root three. And then sine 30, we're working with the other angle this time. So the opposite becomes the one. So opposite over hypotenuse is a half. Cos 30, we're going to do root three over two and then tan 30 opposite over adjacent this time is one over root three. Now, before we move on, I'd just like to make some links between some of the values of sine and cosine that we've calculated. And the thing I'd like to see is that the word cosine means complement of sine. So the co stands for complement. And in this context, when we say complement, we're talking about the fact that complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. For example, suppose we look at the value of sine 60, root three over two, it's the same as cos 30, because 60 and 30 are complementary angles. So whenever we have a particular value of sine or cosine, so for example, cosine 60, 60 plus 30 equals 90, so sine 30 must be the same as cosine 60. And we've also got some at the top, because 45 and 45 also make 90, so sine 45 is equal to cos 45. And that can be a shortcut to helping you to remember some of these. Now, it's not the most essential thing in the course to be able to remember these exact values, but there are certainly a number of times in pure and the mechanics section of the course where it's very helpful if you can just reel these values off without thinking about them. So in my opinion, it is worth a little bit of time 
just to get to the stage where you know the values for at least sine and cos without really having to think about it. Having said that, you've always got your calculator or these two triangles as a backup. Next up, I'd like to think of one of the limitations of using these ratios to define what we mean by sine, cos and tan. On the left hand side, you can see a right angled triangle. I'd like you to pause the video just for a few seconds and think what are the possible values that theta could take in this triangle. Welcome back. Hopefully you were thinking this is a triangle, so the angles must add up to 180 degrees. And since we have a right angle, that means the other two angles must sum to 90 degrees. And so that means theta can only take values that are greater than zero and less than 90. We can't have a right angle triangle with an angle of zero or 90 in it. And more importantly, how do we define sine, cos and tan when theta is bigger than or equal to 90 degrees. Or if we take it further, what happens when theta is zero or negative? In the next video, we'll explore some of these ideas using something called the unit circle.